Welcome everyone, and thank you for joining me on this exciting adventure along the Delaware River. Our trip will make you discover some of the most beautiful sites of the area known as Bucks County, and introduce you to the artists who decided to settle in the region to capture its beauty. This is the Delaware River. Look at those broad, slow-moving waters running through a tree-covered valley lined with colonial villages and rugged, rocky quarries. The river connects Pennsylvania to New Jersey, New Hope to Lambertville, and in between lie rolling hills, broad pastures, picturesque stone farmhouses, and lush forests, all of which were depicted by the artists I am about to present to you. Let's start our journey at the bottom of the river, near New Hope. Let's in fact hop on the boat that I see approaching. Cheerful Barge 269, a canvas created by Mary Elizabeth Price in 1929, and which depicts a large tugboat passing in front of the artist's own front yard, right on the Delaware Canal. The painting was exhibited at Philip Smill inaugural exhibition just a few miles north from where the work was actually painted. Phillips Mill was famously bought by William Lathrop in 1898 and considered to be the birthplace of Pennsylvania Impressionism. Another early comer to the region was Morgan Colt, who was living nearby William Lathrop and the mill. Butcher Wagon was arguably one of his best compositions. It depicts Bucks County's famous local butcher during one of his morning rounds delivering fresh meat to the community. It captures the simplicity of rural life of the 1920s, and everything appears tranquil, from the sheep grazing in the background to the peaceful interaction between the butcher and his customer. Let's continue the voyage up north. A few miles from New Hope, following the famous river road, lies the village of Center Bridge. Look at the picturesque little cottages and farmyards depicted in Kenneth Nunemaker's River Road at Center Bridge. The work showcases Nunemaker's talent and gives us an impressively large atmospheric landscape composed of a thickly layered impasto and a rich color palette, the embodiment of the luscious fall season itself. The painting also shows how influenced Nunemaker was to his mentor, Edward Redfield, who many consider one of the founders of the New Hope School and who also lived in Center Bridge. As a plein air artist, Redfield was a familiar figure in the community, marching through the snow to capture the landscape in front of him with a bold brushwork. He was best known for his winter scenes, usually set in or near the village of Centerbridge, or deep inside the forest, further away from the river and closer to small brooks and creeks. Daniel Garber preferred to remain closer to the river, however. Arguably one of the most famous artists associated with the group, he was also one of the few who taught at the Pennsylvania Academy. He was known and celebrated for his lyrical depictions of the Delaware River Valley, which he captured from his famous cottage in Catalusa. From his house, Garber could see the whole river stretch towards Lumberville, as shown here. Take it that impressive and expansive view of the not yet frozen Delaware River. What you can see in the distance is the Lumberville Raven Rock Bridge, also known as the Lumberville Footbridge. But Garber was traditionally seen as a painter of spring and summer, and liked to capture the magical light hitting the trees and glistening through the leaves as shown in Sycamores, a painting completed in 1923 which takes place north of the Delaware River at Smithtown. Here we see a row of very tall trees set along the river, and through which one can spot a landscape in the horizon. The sycamores give some verticality to the scene. They also contribute to the famous tapestry effect associated with Garber's technique and made to reveal the beauty of the nature surrounding us. Right next to Daniel Garber lived Fern Coppage, another artist who liked to paint outside in the snow. She lived in Lumberville, up the Delaware River, and oftentimes painted her studio or other colorful houses nearby. She also liked to venture into the woods, especially to the village of Carvisville, which was recognizable by the confluence of two streams which formed an island on which the artist liked to paint. Here she uses a very restricted color palette to depict the feeling of a cold, gray December day. Take in the turquoise flow of the creek and look at the colorful houses on each side of the river. In the background, you can spot the bridge in Solberry Township, a historic double-arched stone bridge erected in 1854. Coppage was not the only one to venture in the woods. In fact, George Sauter famously preferred to depict the villages in the valley rather than along the river. 
Originally from Pittsburgh, the artist settled in Bucks County around 1915 and established a studio known as Walnut Grove Farm on Hashmill Road in Hollycong near Buckingham. Instead of depicting the large flow of the river, Sauter preferred more intimate creeks nestled in the woods. He is best known today for his poetic winter nocturne scenes, in which he usually featured quaint hamlets or solitary houses blanketed in the snow, nearby a stream or a forest, and bathed in the soothing moonlight. Well, this is night time, which means we have reached the conclusion of our journey. Everyone descend! unless you wish to continue the voyage towards Philadelphia, where all the works you have seen will be sold on December the 5th.